Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. It is Battlefield. It is a pay-per-view. And what a proper name for tonight's event. Battlefield, it is. There are no Star Wars matches tonight, but we're always welcoming to Boba Fett and Luke Skywalker. But we are in a number one contender match tonight, a titles match tonight, and it's all about teams. It is all about teams. Look at that. Look at this lineup. Look at this lineup. The main event for the team's title. Shazam going up against the reigning movie trivia schmodown team's champion, Jeff Snyder, and someone from his faction. <laughs> the option was that Snyder said, hey, you know what? You know, pick, pick anybody. Pick anybody from the league. And Shazam said, you know what we're, what we're gonna do? We're gonna let you pick. You pick someone from your faction. Mark and I have no idea who the hell's gonna be on it, but that's the main event, Mark. Hello, Mark Ellis. How are you? And how are you feeling about this crazy, crazy event thus far? What a pro you are, Christian Harloff. Yes, it is Baby Carrots from the road, from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I could not be more excited to be joined by two of my best friends for this matchup and two epic, titanic, gargantuan events all in one pay-per-view thing that's going down right now, Christian, because look, you look at that headlining match, and that is the big question, is whose face is going to appear in that question mark. As of right now, I think I can speak for you, I have no idea who Jeff Snyder is teaming up with. That's probably the president's call, and I don't run in those halls. So I think maybe at least you'll know when you introduce them, but until then, it remains a mystery even to you and me. It could be Frank Gorshin for all we know, but that is only one match tonight. This this undercard, you call it an undercard. We have two of the greatest teams featuring four of the greatest movie trivia competitors that we've ever seen in any division that are gonna square off tonight. First off, I mean, come on. You talk about Danger Zone and them leading the dungeon to the number one ranking in the faction standings currently with Ben Bateman and Dan Merle. And then you look at Team Corruption. And so let's be honest, I think even Shannon Barney, the queen of corruption would admit that the year started out a little rocky. They're looking to take that sad song and make it better by hey juding their way to a team's belt. Will they be able to take another step towards that? We're about to find out. Yeah, Mark, there's so much history with all four of these players. Um, you look, first of all, Corruption, the team of Mike Kalinowski and Chance Ellison, they're two time, they're two time team champions and they've been champions before. And one of the ways they took those belts was against Dan Merle and John Roca. They took the titles off of them and Dan Merle and John Roca took the titles off of them. There was a lot of battles. They had four battles and Corruption won three of those battles. So in teams, the team of Mike Kalinowski and Chance Ellison have gotten the better of Dan Merle. However, on the other side of that, his new partner, Ben Bateman, has gotten the best of corruption as a whole. He beat them with deception. He beat Dan Merle, uh, beat the team of deception. They beat that team of Stacey Howard and Tim Franco, and they beat corruption in the Anarchy Tournament. That is who's the boss did him and Mark Riley. So there is... There's that. Mike Kalinowski is coming off of a of a big title win last week against Mara Kanopic from the dungeon. He is now a five-time overall champion, only one behind the six-time champion in Dangerous Dan Merle. So he's trying to get to that title match. Uh, excuse me. Dan Merle has six titles at the moment. He has, he's got six titles at the moment, and Kalinowski has a total of, of five. So this cool. is... Uh, well, it's a lot, and they're building up to try to get to that title shot. Whoever wins the big main event here tonight, these teams, one of these teams, will get the winner. This is going to be a massive, massive battle, and there is no love loss. There's a lot. Chance Ellison looking to become the youngest three-time movie trivia showdown team champion should he get past them here tonight. He's had the better of, of Dan Merle in, in his team's career. And there's just so much smack talk happening already. You saw what happened on backstage last week where Ben Bateman knows what he's doing, calls the team of uh, corruption and uh, one of the most overperforming teams of all time. Mike Kalinowski fires back on Twitter. They start going at it just like they did in the past. There's so much history here. There's so much bad blood, and I can't wait for it to start. Yeah, Christian, you just said all those very nice things, and you've proven your worth in the schmodown. But uh, I put together a little something in iMovie that could have just told everybody that in visual form. And while I do my Southern drunk lawyer impression, Your Honor, can we uh, cut to the promo? It's hot up here. You did not edit that. I don't think you edited it's that. I don't what? believe it. I don't believe it. What I will say is there's a lot of story there. There is a lot of history there. There is so much, as we have 
done this digital age thing, as we have been put in this digital age thing, there have been so many great matches that have happened. We are just on the cusp of getting back to studio matches, to getting back to live events. But what a way to transition, to continue to get titanic matches like this, like this team's match. That These are four of the best players that we have, as you mentioned earlier, and they're all, this is not gonna be one of those fun matches. This is gonna be one of those intense matches, the strategy where it's gonna happen. And last person standing, or last team standing is gonna be looking at that title shot. Yeah, I was going to say, they're all going to be sweating like I am currently in a basement somewhere in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Full disclosure, folks, tried the green screen, didn't quite work, but I am being told by my sister that a new green screen is currently in the dryer. It's a bed sheet, and so we'll see if we can rig it up for match number two. But for match number one, I'm joined by two of my best pals, Luke and Bob. Christian, it's going to be an all-timer. I got a good feeling about it. You ready to get going? Ready to get going. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Three rounds in the team's division. Introducing first. Representing the dungeon. With a record of three wins. No defeats. The team of the former movie trivia schmodown champion of the world. Ben, the boss, Peyton, and his partner, the former movie trivia showdown team champion of the world, and the reigning undisputed movie trivia showdown five-time trivia champion of the world, Dangerous and Merle. This is Dave. Zone appears with those custom smirks, I'd say, at this point, and well deserved at this point. 3 and 0 to winning the mini tournament, getting to this number one contender match, and we start with the champ here. A lot of emotion in the finals match, going against the team of Rushmore, winning the match, doing what you needed to do, Dan, saying you wanted to beat the exchange, but now comes almost, I think, your white whale in the team's division in corruption. Yes, you have a victory over them, but I remember you saying, I don't know, sometimes it feels like they got my number. Does it feel different this season? Well, yeah, if they're my white whale, then I'm the one that's been getting harpooned, but that's gonna all change today because I'm not the same player. I'm not on the same team. I have a new partner. I was listening to your spiel before, Christian. It reminded me of a of a, of a saying I heard that there's there's a lies, damn lies, and statistics. Because I, I see what you're trying to do with this title race, trying to make it close. But I think if you add in defenses, then maybe there's a little more distance there. But you know, I respect the game. You know, you got to make it interesting for the people at home. Fair enough. Okay, Ben, let's chat with you for a while, because if there's any team that knows how corruption trains, it's probably Danger Zone for the simple fact that you and Dan have, like corruption, trained together, but you've also sparred in the past, and so you know each other's weak points, although we can't really see any weakness in either one of y'all's games. How has it been working with Dan, complimenting each other, and do y'all feel like you're operating better now that you have some experience behind you? Well, you know, Ellis, it's funny. When we got together, we thought about this match. We all agreed on one thing. We were playing against Chance Ellison. Um, I could give a, a rat's ass about Mike Kalinowski and what he knows in singles and teams. He's been getting carried by Chance Ellison since they became a team. So uh, f five championships where he studies 300 movies all year. I mean, congratulations again getting carried by a great player. But uh, we're going to win today. I don't really give... Anyway, we, we, but, we can move on from it. But ben, can I say that this is part of the strategy also? You know, you've even when you're not playing Mike Kalinowski, you seem to like to go after him, whether it's on backstage, whether it's wherever it is, you have a thing where you like to 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 poke at Mike Kalinowski. W what is that? Why why is that? Well, here's the thing. You see, Christian, I noticed this week Kalinowski decided to unload, call, call me things like beneath him. Uh, he used a disparaging phrase that I'm not going to use right now, but you know, he really went after my personal character. But what he didn't say was that on that same episode of Backstage, I gave him credit as being ahead of John Rover, as the number two player of all time. I believe five championships is impressive and deserves to be respected. And if I won five, I would hope I was respected too. It's just a joke that this guy comes at me like he actually can best me in a team's matchup when it comes down to him or me. That's ridiculous. 
I mean, come on. And, right. and of course, I like to get in his head because it works. Well, last thing, last thing I do have a question for the champ. Last week, big emotional match, obviously, with Mike Kalinowski and Mark Knopic. A great match. Two champions yeah. fighting to the wire. Is there something in there also now, too, Dan? Maybe a little bit. Obviously, we know why you want to win the match. You want to win the match to get to that title shot. But is there a little added incentive here today, too? I mean, come on, Christian. What do you think? Uh, it's it's this is a blood sport. This is this is what it is this season. This is the season of war. Every possible stake that you could put on the on the table for me personally in this match, if it's you know Ben and I right into the title, if it's my past with this team, uh, you know everything that's happening with the dungeon that's already happened with the dungeon this season, uh, it's all on the table today. It's all right out there, and I know that they're going to be coming at us just as hard as we're coming at them. All right, well, good luck to you both, and we'll see you in just a moment. And their opponents, representing Corruption, with a record of seven wins, three defeats, they are the team of the former movie trivia schmodown two times. Team champion, the Cobra, Kans Ellison, and the reigning three-time movie trivia schmodown inner geekdom champion, they are the former two-time movie trivia schmodown team champion of the world, Mike Kalinowski, Team Cobra. Team Corruption, the former two-time team champions, the three-time Inner Geekdom, current Inner Geekdom champion. Let's start here you, with you, Mike Kalinowski. I got to yes, sir. right away. Um, you, you come off this big win last week. I'm looking at you after the after shows. You got the big smile on your face. There's none of that Mike Kalinowski animosity. And then that all goes away within a second after backstage. You go on Twitter and you go after Bateman. What is it about Bateman that gets you so riled up? Well, first of all, let me stop you right there. It's not about being riled up. It's something that I've learned with Ben Bateman. When you can't win championships, you got to resort to what you know, trash talk. That's all that guy can do. He's part of the dungeon. He's with Trash Mouth himself. Hey, man, if I couldn't win, I'd probably talk a lot of crap too. But I have moved beyond that. That is not, you know me. I love to play players that I respect and respect me. It's quite obvious that Ben Bateman Bateman doesn't respect me. He doesn't respect what I've done. He thinks he's better than me. He thinks he, I'm sure he thinks he's better than me in IG. I know he thinks he's better than his own partner, Dan. I'm above him. So. I had to get one thing out there to kind of set it straight. Like, let him talk his talk. Let him talk all that crap. You know, I'm over Ben. I'm past Ben. I've left him behind. He is like a one-time champion in singles. He's like the Robert Meyer Barnett of IG. Got the belt once and he'll never get it again. So let him talk his talk. Let him go in his little soapbox and, and, and rile up his little followers. And I'm beyond that. Uh, Chance, let me pivot that question over to you a little bit, son of Ellis. Just because, look, you're best buds with Mike and y'all train all the time. You've had some legendary matchups against each other, but you're like blood brothers in this particular sport. And so when you hear all that talk going against him, does that make this match more personal for you as well? I mean, he's not just attacking Mike, he's attacking us as a team, saying we're the most overperforming team, whatever the hell that means. Look, championships speak for themselves. Performances speak for themselves. What did Mike and I do in teams? We perform. We perform extremely well. You hey, look, at that for that. look, you guys are seven and three. You're two time team champions. Chance, I'm going to stay with you here because there's something that Mike had said that I found curious and I want to know uh, your reasoning. When Rushmore and Danger Zone were playing, Mike wanted Danger Zone, excuse me, Mike wanted Rushmore because of the name and thought the name was inappropriate and wanted to teach him a lesson. You said, no, 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 I want Danger Zone. Why? You know what? It comes down to one person, Ben Bateman. I have not been in the ring with Ben Bateman since my debut season. You know, I wanted who was the boss to come up, you know, come up in the ranks, play us, corruption again. But, you know, they embarrassed themselves out of the league before that even happened, which, which made me sad. But now I see this new, this new, you know, quote unquote, super team. And if there's anything, you know, we love doing, Christian, it's destroying super teams. Sorry, right. Thank you, Chance. Last question for you, Mike. You know, yes. I know that it is 
different though with Dan. I know how much respect you do have for Dan Merle, and you do have, uh, you know, you look up to him and you call him the the goat as far as I do in this game. So, but I also know that as I mentioned and as he mentioned, he's got one more championship as far as wins go, not including defenses. Right. Uh, but so, does that now does that make you fight that much harder now to say, well, yeah, now I got to go get my sixth. Dan and I keep, you know, the bar keeps being raised, and I have to uh, address that and attack it as so. You know, I'll say this, and and we talked after the match on Friday, and I said, well, I, well, I get the respect I deserve, and we laughed, and we said, no, of course not. The this the t the tide has changed. I see people that whether you hate me, hate the character, hate me personally, people are now putting me in contention with Dan Merle, calling me one of the greatest players of all time. Route Rushmore when they do that whole thing. I'm on there now, no matter what. It's like they're debating other players now. So I've attained a certain level of respect with everybody. Dan Merrill, and he knows that, is the greatest of all time. But I'll also say this. Dan Merrill plays two divisions. I play three. I play three divisions, and I'm five championships. He plays two, and is six. So it is a neck-and-neck -neck race. It's not undoable. I have a goal in mind right now of what I want to do. Uh, and, you know, this is two matches away from being tied with him. This is two matches away from me being double belted for the first time. Uh, double double belted, I should say. I lose track of all the wins that I have. Well, so yeah, but again, there's the respect there. Benjamin is a different story. Benjamin is called the two men on the screen to see if we would have been players with him this year. He called everybody. He called Marisol, he called Adam. So he latched his lips to a golden train that could get him a win. So that's where we are and that's what we're gonna play. So we're focusing on the match at hand. I don't care about, I mean, that's fun. I mean. Let's 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 have fun here for a second, Christian. Champions at the level of Dan and I, we can batter back and forth about five and six time and this and that. I mean, it's an elite club. It's like you know when you go to the airport and you get that little pass of the, the credit card and you go into the secret room. It's just Dan and I in there. No one else is in there, so we have fun with that. But we're here here for a match. Let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get down to business. All right. Well, thank you to corruption. Now we're going to bring back Danger Zone. That's cute, All right. Mike. So we have Danger Zone and corruption. They are back. And now, Mark, the rules of round number one. As I impress the Gathered Ellis family with my memorization skills, the rules of round number one are as follows. Eight questions from eight different corners of movie trivia schmodown know-how will emerge. These questions are asked to the field, although this is a team's exercise. Round number one, individual test of knowledge. You may not rely on your teammates' ability to get a question correct in round number one we ask the question you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing surface you prefer once we ask you by name or nickname please show what you wrote to the camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone i'll remind each team you have three usages of the jte rule throughout the duration of the match You're not sure you heard a question right you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds use a jete rule you also have one challenge as a team you may utilize at any point throughout the three round match. We'll bring in managers, we'll delineate and deliberate to our heart's content, and ultimately it will be your manager that must confirm and ratify if said challenge is taking place. So Christian, those are the rules of round number one. I knew we had a lot of company, and so I asked Ma to make the meatloaf, but I don't. I, I never know what she's doing in there. Fair enough, all right, we're gonna ask Chance Ellison, are you ready? Let's get it. Mike Kalinowski, are you ready? I'm ready. Dan Merle, are you ready? I am ready. Ben Bateman, are you ready? Yeah, I just want to say, Mike, you know, nobody expects much from you today, buddy, so don't worry about it. Play your heart out and, and chance, you know, best of luck. Excited to see how this goes. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one, question number one. Here we go. Horror slash thriller. What 2004 horror remake features the tagline when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Really put some extra stink on that. Let's get ready to schmo down. That sounded good. You like that? It, was, it sounded like a diaphragm buster to me. Yeah, I hurt my, my, my rib. And <laughs> five, four, three, two, Repeat one. the question. All right, first one. What 2004 horror remake features the tagline when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. First one by Danger Zone. The writers love early tests with these yep. kind of matchups. Yes. Thank you for the competitors. Five, four, hands up, please. Three, two, one. Pens down. 
Hands up, please. And we're going to start with Chance Ellison. Dawn of the Dead. Yes. Uh, Dan. Dawn of the Dead. Mike Kalinowski. Dawn of the Dead. And Ben. Dawn of the Dead. All right. So we have a tie game. First, everybody's getting it. And we start with question. Excuse me. And we continue with question two. And the repeat pays off as we veer to the world of fantasy science fiction. And your question for a point. Christopher Lee, Ava Green, and Daniel Craig appear in what 2007 fantasy adventure film? Fantasy sci-fi, Christian. It's the same category as my friends here, although they're more science fiction, wouldn't you say? You you know, we were getting along. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Not nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. We're going to start here with Dan Merle. Didn't have it. Mike Kalinowski. Was it the Golden Compass? It was. Uh, ben. Uh, yeah, didn't have it. And Chance. Golden Compass. So Corruption goes up by two. Big two points. Both Corruption continue to get that one. Danger Zone misses that just, one. Really quickly, just, just for my sake, can we get a fact check on the year on that? For some reason, I was sure it was 05 or 06. I just want to make sure it's 07. Four exactly. minutes. Mark? I'm not challenging. I just I, I think I... I, I believe it was a different year. I could be wrong. Well, we're going to continue with the match unless you want to challenge, but we will take a look at it when we get a chance, Ben. It was 2007. All right, here we go. Here's the next question. Question three. Question three. Dramas. This 2007 musical drama stars Jonathan Reese Myers, Kerry Russell, and Robin Williams and follows an 11-year-old musical prodigy living in an orphanage who runs away to New York City. 2007, popular year, Christian. Also for your New York football team. They had a pretty good year. Yes. Started out 0-2, and, and they should have lost their third game to my team, but uh, we missed a fourth and one. Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat the question. Sorry. All right, second one, second one. Here it is. This 2007 musical drama stars Jonathan Reese Myers, Kerry Russell and Robin Williams and follows an 11 year old musical prodigy living in an orphanage who runs away to New York City. Second one by Danger Zone. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, please. And this is question three. And this we go to Mike Kalinowski. I didn't have it, guys. Uh, ben Beeman. I wrote August Rush. Got it. Chance? August Rush. And Dan? I wrote Stardust. All right, so only Ben and Chance, but Chance is still perfect right now. And at the moment, the score is Corruption 5, Danger Zone 3. But both Ben and Chance got that one, but Chance still working on a perfect game as we get to question 4. Yeah, and he'll have a chance to get this next one because he lives in this part of the country. Western is the category. <laughs> And for a point, your question, which actor co-stars alongside Haley Steinfeld and Jeff Bridges as Texas Ranger LaBeouf in True Grit? And just cut the tension with a knife here with, this, with these teams. No jokes, nothing being said. They're just nope. playing the game. Nope. If you want humor, then it's going to be all on Christian and I's shoulders, Five, unfortunately. Four. Good luck to you all. Three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And this time we start with Ben Bateman. I'm going to go with Matt Damon. Yes, sir. Chance. Matt Damon. Uh, Dan. Matt Damon. Mike Kalinowski. Matt Damon. Okay. 7-5. Corruption holding a two-point lead as we get to our next question. This is question five, and this is in the realm of animated films. The songs A Girl Worth Fighting For and Honor to Us All are performed in what 1990s animated Disney film? Ah, uh, nice being back here in Virginia, Christian. It's very, very hot, you know. You think LA, you think heat, but it is humid here. Yeah, it sounds like it. Oh. And five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up, please. And this time we start with Chance. Move on. Yes, Dan. Move on. Kalinowski. Mulan. And Ben. Yeah, I wrote Mulan. And 
Now we have a 9-7 game as we get to our next question. Guys, get something else. And now we get to comedies. Yeah, comedies. Anybody? No? Pretty serious match. All right, we'll go to the question for a point. You'll find the character of Cheeseburger Eddie, Paul Wrecking Crew, and Caretaker in what 2005 comedy? So we got 2007 and 2005. And we all know 2006 was obviously the year of the Harloff. Don't do that to me. That's a long time. No, I can't relive those years. And five, four. You were funny. Three. Comedian. Two. I was? One. Yeah. Comedian question. All right, last one. Woo. All right. It's in the category of comedies. Ha ha. Your question for a point. You'll find the characters of Cheeseburger Eddie, Paul Wrecking Crew, and Caretaker in what 2005 comedy? Chance Ellis in his answer. It looks like he's got it already. We'll see. He's playing pretty good thus far. It's perfect. He's the last hope for a perfect round. We'll see. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Hands up, please. And this time we're going to start, excuse me, with Dan. The longest yard. Yes, sir. Kalinowski. I went earlier. Role models. Wrong year. Uh, ben. Yeah, I didn't write it. And Chance. I so wish I can quote this one right now to Ben. The longest yard. So this time Dan gets it. Ben misses. And Corruption right now still holds on to that two-point lead with Chance Ellison still perfect thus far. 10-8. 10-8 as we get to our next question. This is question seven. Penultimate question. There you go, Mark. Thank you. Comic book movies. Jason Isaacs. Terrence Stamp. And Jennifer Garner appear in which 2000s comic book film mark i'm not gonna lie to you is penultimate means second to last yes i felt a little uh tommy coming out of me in that one wow okay four three two one pens down hands up please pens down hands up and we're this time going to start with kalinowski that would be electra Yes, Ben. Didn't have it. Chance. <laughs> Sorry. Electra. Dan. IG special. I put the losers. And it is now 12 8. 12 8. Corruption up by four. Corruption up by four. And we are going to get to our last question. It's the realm of directors, Mark. Yeah, the fancy. They roll the camera. Here it is for a point and your final chance for some of you for a point in round one. Who directed the films Train Spotting, Steve Jobs, and Slumdog Millionaire? So right now, Corruption playing with a four-point lead. Chance Ellison has an opportunity to get a bonus question should he get this one correct here. Right. And we're coming down to five, four, three, two, one. Hands down, hands up. Chance for the perfect round. Danny Boyle. That is correct. And Dan Merle. Danny Boyle. Kalinowski. Look at that, Danny Boyle. And Ben? Also Danny Boyle. So it is 14-10. However, Corruption has an opportunity to go up by five should Chance Ellison hit his bonus question. Chance, this is going to be to you and only you. Are you ready for the question? Yes. Here it is. What film? From director Martin Scorsese, follows an old pro teaching a cocky protege the ropes of pool hustling. The color of money. For one more point, Chance Ellison giving Corruption a five-point lead over Danger Zone. Going into the second round, it is the wheel round. Mark, what are the rules? It is the wheel round. The wheel will emerge, not physically. We can't afford to send four wheels for this match, so it's virtual. You'll spin it with your mind. Each team gets a spin at that third wheel. Once you settle on a category, you're going to hear five questions. I'm kidding. It's six questions. It's the team's matchup, folks. Each question's worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is stealing. You can steal, so maybe if we ask you a question, you don't know the answer off the top of your head, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which... We're told by the writers is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does go down to one. And so it is somewhat of a surprise for some folks, possibly, Christian, a five-point advantage for corruption over danger zone, 15 to 10. So corruption, the question goes to you. Would you gentlemen like to spin first or defer to your opponent? Keep it rolling, Mike. Chance, what we always do, pal. 
Go first. Good round. Go first. <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> I'm so I'm so sorry. Um, before we even get going, I know you guys are you're loose. You're in the zone. I'm so freaking proud of you. I was not surprised by that round. Mike, you held your own. Chance, you went perfect. It's exactly what you guys are more than capable of doing. Dan may be a spineless hack who sold a soul to Ben Bateman, but Ben Bateman is shooketh because they were counting on you guys flubbing round one. That was their bread and butter to burn all their repeats in round one because they thought that you guys would be so far behind that it wouldn't matter. And guess what? It's going to matter now, okay? Kaiser's going to get on the screen in about 30 seconds and tell them that it's a new ball game, the score is 0-0 wrong the score is 15 to 10 and you guys are up right now so stay in that zone stay in that study session mode let's get this wheel up we know exactly what we're going to do here i know everyone hates when we say that but we know what we're doing here all right so let's hope for a good spin and we'll see what happens let's carry right. up this momentum thank you man. we're going to bring up the wheel excellent job chance excellent job sir all right here is the wheel and here is the spin by corruption let's go baby there it goes. The wheel is off and running. And it lands on Spinner's Choice. Corruption hitting Spinner's Choice. All right, so 60 seconds to decide starting now. Listen, guys, this is this is the Schmodown God smiling upon us. We have spun opponent's choice in our matches the past, what, three games or something? So finally, a breath of fresh air that we deserve, okay? It's Spinner's Choice. I don't think there's any deliberation as to what you guys are going to go with here, but talk it out with each other. Chance we talk, Mark always says it's wheel of, you know, whatever, whatever, and destiny and fate. And, and there were some fate digs thrown at me. Yes, there were some digs thrown at me that first round, and fate is coming back around. It came back around oh, to my yeah. IG win for me. So, my friend, we know what we're doing. You got the perfect round for us. You call it, sir. You know what, Mike? I want to give, you know, I want to really show it by Bateman's face. So, I want to give you a chance to shine. Look at comic movies. I like it. I appreciate that, Good sir. Time. Thank you. All right, comic Let's book movies. It. Comic book movies it is. All right, so thank you. All right, guys. So we are going to comic book movies. Here is the first question. Which actress co-stars as Judge Hershey in 1995's Judge Dredd? Chance, back me up on this. It's Diane Lane. I concur. It's, it's 95's Judge Dredd, right? That's what he's saying? That's correct, yes. It, gentlemen, Diane Lane, final answer. It is correct and here is the second question second question this actress played sarah ross the object of bruce willis's affection in red and red 2. mike that is oh no it's louise park, mary louise parker mary louise parker yeah I can uh, mary louise parker do you concur i can go mary louise parker final answer final answer final answer that is Correct. Two more points. Here's question three. Andrea Beaumont is the name of Bruce Wayne's love interest in which Batman film? Chance. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. I concur. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Final answer. Two more points. All right. Here is the next question. This is question four. In Thor, what is the name of the realm that the Frost Giants are from. Michael Blue, that's Jotunheim. Jotunheim is correct. I concur, Chance. Take it. Jotunheim, final answer. Correct for two more points. All right. Question five. Who plays Mr. Savannah, the estranged father of Dr. Thaddeus Savannah and CEO of Savannah Industries in the film Shazam? That is Jason John, Woodrow from Batman John Robin, Glover. John Glover. You concur? Say it, buddy. Uh, John Glover, final answer. That is correct. Who stars as Ash Corvin, the latest person to be resurrected by the spirit of the crow in the film The Crow, City of Angels? Chance, back me up on this. Vincent Perez. Yes, that is correct. I concur. He concurs. Vincent Perez, final answer. That is correct for two more points. So corruption clears the board here. 2710 comic book movies. 2710. So we are going to remove. We're going to remove corruption here. All right. Danger zone is back. Gentlemen, there are no steal opportunities on the table at the moment. Corruption did go perfect in that round. The score at the moment is 2710. 
2710. So we are going to bring in Kaiser. You guys are going to get 60 seconds to talk to your manager starting now. You know, Mike Kalinowski reminds me of a brown billed duck. Now you see a brown billed duck flies in the same formation as all the other ducks. The problem is it can't stop as fast. So if you've ever wondered why so much crap comes out of Mike's mouth, now you know. Well, boys, it's the wheel round, my favorite uh, time of day, wheel round. I think we can clean this bad boy up. How you all feeling? Well, corruption can't hit spinner's choice again on us this round, so at least we have a chance to do something good now. Yeah. Well, I think we need to use this clock. We need to hone in and, and face what's in front of us right now. One question at a time. Yep. Take these guys to a five-point question. We beat their butts there. So, hey, man, one question at a time. You guys are the best at working together. I believe in you. Let's keep it strong. And let's fight, baby. Let's play Dungeon Ball. All right. Let's do it. All right. Thank you. And now the wheel will go up. And here is the spin. And it is animated movies is what it's settled on. Animated movies. Ben, Dan, you have 60 seconds to decide with your manager. Do you want to keep animated movies or do you want to use your mulligan, which is golf, for do-over? Dan, Kaiser, um, this is one of their two strengths, I believe. And, I think so, too. Um, yeah. I mean, we don't really miss in this category when we practice it, but it also is their category. So, yeah. No, you you crushed this last night, so I'm not worried about it. But uh, just remember, you also have no JTEs left, so yeah. whatever you pick, you got to use the clock, and and maybe we give it another give it another go and see if we can get something we like a little better. I mean, we're confident we draw in the, the wheel. wheel so, yeah, yeah, exactly. We drop the wheel. If we hit opponent choice, they're gonna probably give this to us anyway. So why don't we spin again? Yeah, see worst case scenario, same slice. Yeah. Best case scenario, we uh we get something better. Let's do it. All right, so they're going to spin away, and here is the second spin by Danger Zone. Francis Ford Coppola. Okay. All right, it. we're wow. going to get you're going to get six questions now of Francis Ford Coppola. All right, so all right, boys, dial in. Okay, they are in the other room, Mark, and now Danger Zone will get six questions in the realm of Francis Ford Coppola. And what a highway he's built for himself over the decades. Christian, now we go to the movies of Francis Ford Coppola. Gentlemen, for two points, unless you need multiple choice, question one, who plays Tom Hagen in the Godfather films? I believe, this Dan, is, that this is Robert Duvall. It is 100% Robert Duvall, yes. Robert All right. Duvall, final answer. Thank you for the final answer. The confirmation is noted and is correct for two points. They're on the board in round two. As we zoom into question number two, who plays the title character in 1986's Peggy Sue Got Married? This, Dan, is Kathleen Turner. It is the delightful Kathleen Turner. Yes, we're sure 100% Peggy Sue Got Married, 86, Kathleen Turner. Okay. Kathleen Turner, final answer. Finally, a question that Brett Sheridan would have gotten, and that is correct for two more points. All right, and your third question in the world of Francis Ford Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola directed 1990s legal thriller based on a John Grisham novel, which stars Matt Damon. Okay, this is impossibly hard to hear, but I will say that I believe. I can repeat that for you because I heard it chopped up too. I'll give it to we you. Know what the we know what the answer. We know. Is. I think we know the answer. Right? It's the Rainmaker, right, with Bateman? Yes, that is correct. Okay, yes. it's the Rainmaker. Final answer, gentlemen. Question four in the world of Francis Ford Coppola, and your question is. Who plays the main female character, Mina Harker, in Bram Stoker's Dracula? I believe, Dan, that this is going to be Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder immediately jumped into my head, so I will co-sign with you on that. She does play Mina. Winona Ryder, final answer. Lucky Dan. Yeah, that is correct for two more points. And gentlemen, we have two questions left. My sounding okay out there, Ben and Dan. Yes. You wonderful. sound great, Ellis. Your voice like an angel. Dulcet tones. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. All right. All right. Two more questions in the world of Francis Ford Coppola. And your penultimate question, which actor plays a character only known as the Motorcycle Boy in 1983's Rumblefish? Well, my all-time favorites, Dan. This is Mickey Rourke. Um, he comes to town to, to help stop him from the rumble, I believe. He's your favorite partner, so I'm with you on that one. Uh, the answer is Mickey Rourke. Final answer. 
We actually have Mickey Rourke stop a rumble. All right, that's correct for two more points. Christian, they're perfect through five. And now for a perfect round, number two, here's their sixth question. Gentlemen, Lawrence Fishburne had an early role as Tyrone Clean Miller in which 1970s Coppola film? I believe, Dan, this is Apocalypse Now. It is a very lean Lawrence Fishburne. Yes, Apocalypse Now. Yes, Apocalypse Now, final answer. I like the smell of perfection in the late afternoon, early evening. And Christian, we have two perfect rounds from both teams here. It is back to being a five-point ball game as we head into round three, but not before we welcome back to the stream. Yep, Corruption. Danger Zone had a perfect second round also, and the score at the moment, 27-22. 27-22 as we get into the third round. This is the final round, Mark. How do the rules work? No stealing or tomfoolery options necessary for this because four minds like steel traps as we head to the final round that will determine the match. Round number three, gentlemen, each team needs to give us a series of numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same integers as your opponent because each numeral corresponds to a different category of movie trivia, schmodown, mystery. First question's worth two points, next one three. Final one worth five points. It is the team's match. So again, here's where it gets a little divergent, is we'll tell you what the category is for your two-point question. The team must select which member is going to be answering that question solo. You may not rely on your teammate's strength for the two-pointer. The opposite team member will then have to field the three-pointer. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point final question in round number three. So it is still a five-point advantage for corruption over danger zone corruption. You may give us your three lucky numbers first. From 1 to 20, what feels fortunate? All right, Chance, so you just want me picking them, buddy? Go ahead. Uh, coming to me is 3, 14, and 17. 3, 14, and 17 for Corruption and for Danger Zone? Bateman, why don't you take two and I'll pick the money number. Let's go with uh, 7, 11. And Dan? And 9. 7, 11, and 9 for Danger Zone 3. 14 and 17. All right, Shannon, you got 60 seconds to talk to your team starting now. You guys, whatever color Ben Bateman had in his face has drained from his body and his soul because he was not expecting round three to go like this. You have that five point lead. You have all three of your JTEs. You have a challenge should you need it. I think we know what we're doing here as far as who answering what, um, unless you guys have anything else to say. All you got to do is stay steady. This is your round. This is your round, okay? You guys absolutely crushed it in round two. And I don't think that anyone complained about Spinner's Choice right now because it sounds like they kind of got their own Spinner's Choice too. Maybe they put Francis Ford Coppola on the wheel because they didn't seem to hesitate with anything. So, fair ball game. All is going well for us. Stay the course, mind your JTEs, trust your freaking guts, and let's close this out. Because they're gonna answer all three of their questions, so we need to answer all three of our questions too. Should we need to? 60 seconds, guys are starting now. You know, before we get going, I've noticed recently that some fans are complaining about managers coming in between rounds and talking to their players. I agree. I, it's atrocious that Shannon Barney should be allowed to come in here and make it all about herself and try and tell some stupid joke and, and, and bestow some kind of wisdom on those two dicky dudes. I hear you, fans. It's aggravating. Boys, we got to go perfect. Round three, this is where we go perfect. This is where they screw up their five and we don't. Let's take them. Let's drag them to the bitter end. This is where you excel. This is where Danger Zone makes their money. I love you guys. Take your time. No JTEs and use that clock. Trust your gut, Dan. That's what we got to do Trust your here. gut. Copy that. All right, we are back. Mark, we are back. And now we are going to start with Danger Zone. They're going to try to avoid the TKO. They chose category seven for their first category, the two-pointer, and that's Denzel Washington. That's right, he's a young actor with a lot of promise for the future. Uh, gentlemen, who's gonna be fielding that question? I mean, Dan, we, we flip-flop based on category strength. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good in this category. I feel at the two, I feel good about this as a two. You wanna take it? Yeah. All right, take the shot. All right, so Ben Bateman will be taking the, the two-point question in Denzel Washington. All right, your question, sir. For two points, and to cut the lead of corruption to three, Denzel Washington plays coach Herman Boone in what football film? <laughs> <laughs> I 
remember the Titans. It's hard to forget them with a movie that good. That is correct. Three point lead for corruption. And with the next correct question answer, it could be a tie. I couldn't believe you guys did football. I just figured Hoom and Boone was going to be what I got. So So now Dan Merle will get the three point question. And it is in the realm of action adventure. Action adventure. Okay. Action adventure movies. Whole lot of popcorn. Dan, for three points and to tie corruption. To avoid the TKO, your question. What is the name of the cursed Egyptian high priest who rises from the dead to destroy the world in 1999's The Mummy? His name is Imhotep. We got a tied ball game, Christian. It is tied up. So, in order for corruption to force it back <laughs> to danger zone if they're five, then we'll, either Mike Kalinowski or Chance Ellison will have to hit the two point question. They chose the category of category, excuse me, category three. And that no, is. No, chose. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Sorry. Spielberg. Spielberg. All right. Chance? I mean, we're going off this, so. You got it. I'll take Spielberg. All right, Mike is going to field the question in the realm of Steven Spielberg. And your question for two points and to regain the lead. Which Oscar-winning actor plays Captain James Hook in the film Hook? Oh, that is... Dustin Hoffman. That is correct for two points. And all of a sudden, Christian, we're at that moment where it's a five-pointer. The danger zone's got to have. Danger zone needs to hit it. They do not have any more JTEs left. If they hit this question, then they force it back to corruption. However, if they miss, then corruption will be moving on to play the winner of tonight's title match. All right. Mark, they chose category nine, and that is in coming of age. Coming of age. Two teams coming of age in a match like this. Gentlemen, your question for five points and for a three-point lead to stay in the match. Carrie Mulligan stars as a teenage girl growing up in 1960s London who begins a relationship with a man twice her age in what 2010 film? I believe this is an education, Dan. Yes, that's right, an education. That's I was thinking a separation, but it's an education. You're 100% correct. An education, that's the correct answer, yes? Yes. Yes. An education, final answer. I concur as well because it is right. And now, Christian, just like that, Danger Zone has a three-point lead over corruption. We pivot back to corruption for a three-pointer that could tie it up. It could tie it up here. Chance Ellison will get the three-point question. He hits it. Then they have an opportunity to win it with their five. They still have an opportunity to win it with their five, but they will tie it up should Chance Ellison get this. Chance, your category here, you chose category 14, and that is is martial arts martial arts films all right all right chance your question in the world of martial arts what hong kong filmmaker made his american directorial debut with the 1993 film hard target john Woo. i almost put my banner behind it because it's right here in the house that is correct for three points and now it's a tied ball game christian it all could come down to this five-point question to corruption where they can confer to arrive at a final answer. So, with this, if corruption hits it, then they win the game and they go on to play the winner of tonight's title match. However, if they miss, we go to sudden death. The category was number 17, Quentin Tarantino Films. Quentin Tarantino films. And here is the question. Doug Williams' lucky number lands. One of the most celebrated directors of our time. And now your question. For the win. In what Tarantino film will you find a bar named Gueros? 
and a character named Jungle Julia. Okay. Let's talk this out, Mike. Okay. Got a total of nine movies. Okay. Let's see, so we can rule out Hateful Eight and Django and Chain. Yep. We got all uh, three repeats. Oh, use your repeat. Four. Three. Yeah. Help me out, Two. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. All right. Here is the first one. Jungle Julia. Your question. Oh. World of Tarantino movies. In what Tarantino film will you find a bar named Gueros and a character named Jungle Julia? I think yes. it's... You got something? I th go I, if you know it I'm going to trust you on this one but I believe I know it as well my friend so you see I, be I believe that's death proof and I that was what I said as I well four yeah. repeat, three. The question. repeat the question the second okay, one so we're talking buddy so I think All it's right. that one with Jungle Julia I think it's the girl film, I think it's a bar named Gueros and a character named Jungle Julia because she's the DJ who tells about the whole like I believe story. that is correct. I can picture her. That's with with my girl Vanessa Ferlito doing her lap dance in it, buddy. So yeah. I'm I'm hey, picking that. Let's go. The bed Take bed. And you watching? You watching? Death Five. proof. Final answer. And you're winner. Yeah. And let's go. go. And that's what we do. Yeah. For a yeah. 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 Baby, you remember this move? Yeah! From when I beat you before? <laughs> yeah! Corruption does it. Obviously very exciting. Ah! For the number one contenders officially as they have defeated Danger Zone. They are now, excuse me, they're now eight and three with a victory over here hitting the five point question. They have, they will be playing the winner of tonight's main event. So the winner of tonight will face Corruption in the number one contender match. All right, congratulations to Corruption. We are going to remove them at the moment, and you will be talking to Jen Sturger in just a moment. And Mark, that's also a big four points for Corruption. Now, Corruption now picking up from pay-per-views alone. Last week, they had picked up the, the two points from Marisol, the seven points from Mike, and now another four points here from Team Corruption, and they're climbing back up the rankings with this victory over Danger Zone. It was the first round. This, this is what it was. It was the first round here today because they both had really incredible second rounds. It was that first round, though, that I think did them in because Chance Ellison went perfect again. This kid in the first round, he, I, I got to see these stats. He's got to be one of the best first round players that we have because he just continues to, he, he's, he's a weapon. He is a serious, serious weapon. And Mike Kalinowski, I believe, had six in the first. So when corruption plays like that in the first round, they are a very, very hard team to beat. Yeah, and it sort of looked like they punched the Danger Zone in the mouth a little bit, particularly with Ellison's perfect round one and how well Mike Kalinowski played. The killer doing a good job in round one as well. It all comes down to this, Christian, because look, you can talk about trash talk and bad blood within the realm of this particular match, but in the context of this season eight war in the Schmodown, you look at the factions. It's what we referenced at the top of the show, and now it does look like corruption has shifted into that next gear. We brought up Hey Jude. They are about to hit the na-na-na phase of that song, and they don't look like they're stopping anytime soon. No, I mean, they have another chance to become... Mike Kalinowski has an opportunity now to become a three-time Inner Geekdom and a three-time Teams champion, and Chance Ellison has an opportunity because they are getting the next shot at whoever wins tonight, whether it's going to be Jeff Snyder and his new partner, whoever that might be, uh, or Shazam. We're going to find out, and we're going to see how they're feeling because Jen Serger with, is with a very happy Team Corruption right now. Jen? How's it going, guys? Oh, my God. I, I just... Mike, it's always good to interview you when you're in a cheery mood, lollipop in hand. I it's remember. Like a much rem it's a better interview for me, honestly. <laughs> I'm just remembering back to Mr. Ben Bateman mouthing off saying, no one expected much from me. See what happens, buddy boy. See what happens, buddy boy. That's all. Chance, take it. You talk, Chance. And, and, the, and the ironic thing is people expect things from Ben Bateman, and he didn't deliver. Wait, hold That's on. That's what happened when you just expect us. I want to clear something up. Did Ben Bateman miss the most questions out of everyone in round one? He kind of did. Oh, he kinda crap. Did. He did, didn't he? Oh, mm -hmm. you guys are going to be so mad because now we're just being mean to, to, to Dan and Ben. And I, quite frankly, don't give a crap because they set themselves up for this and they deserve everything that's coming to them. Do you guys think that you just possibly have, like, Dan Merle's number? Like, the fact that we're here again... Oh, I think there's no question as to whether or not we have Dan Merle's number. 
Is, is there Mike? Is there a question? I, well, I have the highest respect for Dan, so I, I, mean, do. I, I, do. I don't want to trash talk him. I don't want to say anything negative about Dan Merle because I know what he puts in. I, you know, I see him kind of as a kindred spirit in the Schmodown. Uh, so, you know, hey, from the beginning of this term uh, of this whole tournament, whatever the, he let, you know, he took pity on a player. And I think it's going to sully his legacy because of that. Um, you know, that's neither here nor there. So. So let's talk about the chance to become three time champions. Uh, how are you guys feeling going into this title match now? Your opportunity to hold those belts again. Chance, what would that mean to you? Oh, say, say those words one more time. Three time champion. Mm. <laughs> Sounds Three great. time champion. <laughs> Woo, that sounds great, Jen. That sounds excellent. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike and I are going to do what we do. We're going to go and we're going to play and we're going to take those belts back and bring them back to corruption where they belong. You know, yeah. And, and there was a lot of pressure, Jen. I did feel a lot of pressure. Chance was ready. I was just coming off that IG win, but I've spent the past couple months in IG and, and we had four days to flip it around. You know, if I had those two points and the bonus in the um, first round, would that put us in a much better place? I know Ben likes to talk with his numbers about he wants to go in six points. We were one point away from that going into round one on them. Um, so I got to shore up my round one. We know that, you know, but I just want to say this and then I'll, I'll stop talking because I know I like to talk. No, uh, you won't. People talk <laughs> about me and, you know, this and that and my IG, whatever. Let me tell you something. I started studying for IG for this belt that I just won for two months, February 28th till this match. This notebook right here, that's what I just did for two months. Now imagine what you will, if I took time off from IG, put that focus towards singles play or my round one, how devastating I would be, devastating to those players. So Ben and them, they wanna talk about me and IG. They don't want me just giving up on IG, but I put all that knowledge. So now I'm gonna focus on this team's belt. I'm gonna be a six time champion very, very soon. Shannon Barney, how are you yes, feeling after today's victory? Especially the fact that you were able to essentially Get Ben Bateman to quiet down. Oh, it's my favorite thing in the world to get Ben Bateman <laughs> to shut up. Because when you are the least accomplished person sitting at a table, your only defense is distraction. So he didn't have that going for him today. You saw him get real quiet real quick. Not not unlike when we uh, they played Deception. Now, that was some vengeance for Deception. That was some payback because we all know that story. And, and he was very proud of himself for that. But this just goes to show you guys, look at this. These are two IG teams and singles players and you want to disparage this team based on their lop sided singles records this is a team's division it's a different ball game it's a different strategy and these guys come off of ig championship level matches and come around and beat this factory farmed manufactured team so i don't know what else to do or to say i don't care if you like them or not these guys are legendary players put some freaking respect on their names. I don't know. Dan Merle still hasn't stepped into IG. Ben Bateman's been running his mouth about Star Wars since last season, and neither of them have stepped out of their comfort zone to go into a specialty division yet. So until someone can pull off what Mike and Chance pull off constantly, one bad game or a couple sloppy round ones here and there, I don't want to hear any crap. So preferences obviously because you guys have to watch the next match uh do you guys have a preference to face either <laughs> snyder and mystery teammate or possibly shazam oh I, I found it was funny that chance and i were going into this one we wanted two different teams so chance i'm gonna refer to you who do you want pal oh <laughs> man yeah, can you get on the same page yeah we i don't know we'll see are we on the same page here you what know you mystery isn't dyson i like mystery okay my entire shelf is stocked with agatha christie novels so i like mystery but i love revenge even more oh to bring on shazam you're gonna do that to me, aren't you? I want Snyder, but I want Snyder revenge. Be fun. Be fun. I want revenge. revenge. Great. revenge is he great. took my triple belt away from me. It's a long season, guys. He took and my triple belt it. away from me, Snyder. Look, Wait, hold the, hold the phone, because I want to say something kind of nice for mm. once in my life. Okay. I think playing Snyder would just be hilarious. I think it would it would be jolly for me to watch that go down. However. I want you guys to play Shazam because we owe Shazam a much better match than what they got out of us last time. And you two can do it. And that's what I want to see. I want them to get the match that they deserved last time. And I want us to take that belt back from them. So Jen, that's what I want. Last question for you. I mean, look, last season you were in last place and you clawed your way back. And I feel like we're starting to see that momentum start happening for you guys again this season. So how optimistic are you? especially after today's match. I'm a realist, but I'm also a feisty broad. So, you know, 
no argument here. Anyways, congratulations, guys, uh, on a fantastic victory. And uh, best of luck to you against a uh, team to be named later. <laughs> ben sucks. Bye. <laughs> So clearly, Shannon not holding back any punches against Ben Bateman. And you know, Ben Bateman is is no dummy. Ben Bateman knows what's coming when, you know, he, this is this is what he does. A lot of times he's on the winning side of it. So he's able to kind of smirk and laugh. And and today, you know, he didn't have a great round one. And honestly, we haven't seen him have a round one like this in years. Um, and I think that it's just one of those times that it just it they came back fighting. And that's the reason why they were three and oh, it's the reason why they they made it through that tournament is once that hiccup happened in the first round it, it, that was it they came back and they were fighting but they but it, that was that was tough to come back from yeah christian and look it is actually in a way and not the way the danger zone would have liked it's a huge compliment to the combined power of those teammates that corruption is so happy about the win today that that shannon is celebrating out of her mind it's because danger zone is such a formidable foe and so that's not going to help bateman and merle sleep tonight but what will is that they know what they're capable of and heck we saw it in round two and round three today and so they're not going anywhere they haven't fallen off the map they're still well on the radar and a threat to win any team Teams match they have yeah well they're three and one and they're right they're right still in the thick of it i mean they're, they're not, not a lot of teams that are three and one at all i would assume that their next match would come against final exam or someone of that ilk so uh this is an interesting interesting turn of events here today corruption taking the, the victory and now we're going to throw to the dungeon and danger zone who is with jen sturd hey jen how are you uh Probably better than you guys are feeling right now, especially having watched uh, Corruption's interview, I'm sure. Um, ben, look, what happened today? It, it, it didn't feel like the typical Bateman performance that we're used to. And so I just kind of have to, I guess I have to start there. Like, did you just kind of get in your own head? I mean, round one wasn't our wasn't our day today, unfortunately. It wasn't my day today. I think Christian just said it a second ago. It's been a couple years since I had a bad round one. Um, but it is what it is. It happens. You play a lot of matches and, and you win a lot of matches and every once in a while it doesn't come up your way that day. So um, we did the best we could. We I think we knew after round one it was going to be a fight. We knew we had to push them to their five. It's exactly what we did. We got every single point we could after a tough start. And uh, we'll look back at this one as one we wish we had gotten back. But you, you, you can't really study for a bad round one. It encompasses every single question ever. And if, you're, if, you're, if your average is seven or eight or whatever it is like if you get a bad set you get a bad set we should have done better we didn't so i'd ask if you respect kalinowski now but i feel like that answer still is not going to have changed much well he likes to say i have no respect that's his words when i go on my show and i say that he's the second greatest player of all time and that comes out of my mouth i i think that's giving the man respect he he went on a tirade because i said that corruption was an overperforming team because when Mike gets six points in round one, it's a field day because he isn't a very good singles and teams player. He's quoting the time he beat me two years ago. That was the last time he did anything in singles. I have all the respect in the world for what he's accomplished. Otherwise, I wouldn't say that. But for whatever reason, these guys decided to really, uh, really pile on. And I'll tell you something, Jen. I'm always going to play my game when I'm in a match. Every time, always. But this guy that I play with, he doesn't deserve that. He plays the game with class. So, you know, come at me. Everybody. Do what you got to do. Well, but I got to say something because it goes even to the questions that we get after the match. And it's no offense. I think it's just because Ben, you know, he is Ben. We all know who Ben is. We know the way he, he, he approaches a match. It's different than I am. But like even the questions they get, everyone dogpiling on Ben. So this wasn't a Ben Bateman performance. I think we had about equal first rounds. It wasn't like I aced the first round. Go back and look at round two. Ben was driving the ship. Go back and look at round three. Who pulled the five? It wasn't me. It was Ben. And I feel like people go after Ben because he makes himself a big target. But the fact of the matter is that today's loss is on both of us. It's not on him. It's on me and him because I also had the worst round one that I can remember. And those were some tough questions. Those were tough. But you know what? I'm going to draw, you know, the line I'm going to draw between me and the team that beat us before, which is Rushmore. There's also a member of that team that aced that round, which means those questions weren't quite as tough for him. So hats off to Chance for going perfect because that's a tough round one. I'm not going to sit here and blame tough questions. I probably should have gotten those. Or you know what? Maybe yeah, I just didn't know him because today I just didn't know him. But I, you know, I, I get it. I get that Ben is a big target. But at the same time, we are a team. It is not, you know, 
an individual game and we're just playing next to each other. So this, we win together, we lose together. And so people, I'm not telling people not to come after Ben. I'm saying come after both of us because this is on both of our shoulders. And Jen, here's the deal. We joined the dungeon for one reason and one reason only, and that was to win a team championship. We started three and one, didn't go our way today. It's the same goal that it was when we started. We're still going to get the team championship. We're still going to get the faction championship. You're looking at the singles champion right now. I'm planning on mowing my way through the competition to play this guy, to test that might one more time. And that's what it is. That's what the season's about. So when you lose a match and, and people want to pile on and, and Shannon wants to wear her crown and Mike wants to eat his lollipop, go for it, guys. Have fun. Everybody talks when they win. We're just going to keep fighting. Kaiser, you're surprisingly quiet right now. Do you have anything to add? You know, sticks and stones may break our bones, and that's when I come back with a tank. That's when I come back with a vengeance. So let me tell you something, corruption. You get homeowner's insurance for that crap shack in Arlington Heights that you and the rest of those cockroaches in that faction live in, okay? Ben Bateman is a champion, a singles champion. Chance isn't. Ben Bateman is a singles champion. Mike Kalinowski isn't. So Ben Bateman is our team captain, and our and our team will look to Ben Bateman for leadership to turn this slump around. I got I got the GOAT, I got the boss, and I got the best friends in the league. And I'll tell you what, every great team hits a rough spot. Nobody wins them all except that lucky Dolphins team back in 70-whatever. I don't remember. But the point is this. We, we are still number one in the standings, and we will be number one at the end of the season. Now, Jen, we got to get better, okay? We got to get better. Congratulations to Chance, played his butt off, had a damn good game. But let me tell you something, we got to get better. If we want to hang with teams like that, if we want to beat teams like that, if we want to put belts around our waist, we got to get better. That's on us. It ain't on nobody else. And we're, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I believe in these guys. Well, Dan, any final words, obviously? Just I, I, I look to you because, honestly, you can put even a loss into such eloquent terms. Where do you guys go from here obviously you have such a strong start and this is just a simple you know hurdle that you guys just weren't able to overcome today so it's like what next we go forward i mean that this isn't the end of the season huh. it's this isn't slowdown spectacular we're in act two we're in act two of this season we're barely into act two um we go forward we keep going a great story your, your heroes don't win in act two they win in act three and you know i'm one in four against corruption i'm very 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 aware of that the 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 waves of my team's career keep breaking against the shores of corruption but i don't care if i have to throw myself against that wall 10 times if i have to throw it nine more if i lose nine more times but i take the belt off their shoulder because you know what four losses i will tell you that one win where we walked away with the belts that were on their shoulders was sweeter than 40 losses against corruption so if we have to face corruption again so be it i'm happy to i'm happy for the opportunity we're going to come back. We're going to come back stronger. We're, we're a better team today than we were when we started the tournament, whatever, a month ago. We're going to be a better team the next time we play. We're going to be a better team than that at the end of this season. We're three and one. We have a, a great team, a great combination. It wasn't our day. It happens. We're not going to get all down and out. We're not going to talk about, oh, did we make a mistake? I know I didn't make a mistake. And I will tell you this, I can promise you, I think you probably would have seen those three little letters, T-K-O, if I were playing this game with John Roca instead of Ben Bateman, because I have no faith that that cowboy would have gotten us as close as we got today. So I am not shaking one iota in the confidence of this team. And I am anxious to go back into a tournament because guess what? Unlike when we went into the first team's tournament, this one that just ended, now I know I can win one. And I can win it with Ben Bateman. All right. So obviously, what a, I mean, passionate, upset, you can tell. Um, strong words by both Ben Bateman and Dan Merle here today. And Dan saying, you know, that, that it was that one victory. I think that's what keeps him going against corruption. But corruption gets the victory here today. It was a lot of words, a lot of bad blood, and it results in a match for the ages here as corruption defeats Danger Zone, who did not go quietly into the night, not by a long shot. They fought all the way back after that tough first round, going perfect in the second round, going perfect in the third round, but ultimately losing to uh, 
corruption by that five point deficit. Chance Ellison is the is the story. Mike Kalinowski, yes, he played great tonight. Mike Kalinowski is coming off of a third title match, and Mike Kalinowski is one of the best players in the game. But Chance Ellison is still in a very young stage in his young career, and look at what he did here again tonight. He came in as a phenom. He has proven why he has got that moniker. This kid is the goods. He is a great player. He continues to show why he is a fantastic player, and he, he if we if we did this. I believe he'd be the MVP for tonight. He was perfect today, Christian, and a lot like that. It was 1972 Dolphin team, Kaiser. We don't talk about that in my household, but for Chance, he didn't have to carry Mike today. Mike did just fine on his own, but it also showed the formidability of a team where you can't really count either member out. The same could be said for Danger Zone, Christian. If we walked into this match, we both knew they were going to hit their respective five pointers. We're just prepping for sudden death. Did not quite go that way today, but this is probably not the last that you've heard of these two teams. And we leave this match and look forward towards next match with more questions and answers. And I mean that, yes, very literally. We don't know who's going to emerge, at least I don't as of right now. I don't think Christian does. Will there be a dry green screen by the time we come back? A lot is going to be answered in the next hour and a half, I would say. That's right. The title match is coming up, and they will be facing whoever they might be tonight <laughs> at the end. They will be facing corruption in a month because of the way the title picture has been pushed back. It was supposed to happen last month. They're going to be playing fairly soon against corruption. So Mike Kalinowski, Chance Ellison, corruption does it, and we will be back after this five-minute intermission, and we'll be back with that title match. Mark, see you in a bit, bud.